For a moment, let's forget about the truthful revelation. So the things that we have discussed in the past two modules uh, about truthfulness, let us set aside that for a moment and just uh, talk about aggregating opinions. So players have, all the agents have uh, different preferences uh, and in this context we are only talking about ordinal preferences and not cardinal preferences even though all the results that you prove here will also uh, follow in the cardinal preferences. Uh, can we actually create social preference orders from individual preferences? This is the question that we are going to ask and this is essentially the setup of Arrow's social welfare function. So Arrow's, uh, this uh, uh, setup is essentially named after Kenneth Joseph Arrow who has actually given these results. Uh, so in this setup what do we have? So we have a finite set of alternatives, the outcomes that we can pick and let's say there are n possible outcomes here and we also have a finite set of n players. Now what are the, uh, how are the preferences or the, the types of each of these agents defined? Each player has a preference order, this, these are their types which is capital Ri over A and this Ri is a, is a binary relation so uh, if you don't know what is a binary relation it's just a subset so uh, a binary relation ri is nothing but a subset it could be a uh, the whole set also so a cross a so you pick an element let's say a and another element from the same set let's say b and you are uh, using this tuple a and b to denote that a comes before b so what does that mean in, in this context of preference? So we are going to write this uh, uh, notation. So we will use this notation interchangeably A comma B or A R I B. So where we are also making sure that this is the preference order. Uh, so this means that A is at least as good as B. So A is at least uh, as much preferred as B. So you can interpret it in that way. Now we are going to also put certain restrictions or certain kind of properties on this uh, preference order Ri. So here are a, a bunch of uh, properties of Ri that we are going to assume. So the first thing is about completeness. So we are going to say that every pair of alternatives A and B that you pick from this set A, either A should be at least as preferred as B or B should be at least as preferred or uh, as A or the both can happen. But it, it will never be a case that you cannot really compare between two alternatives. Even if uh, I give you two alternatives, you will not be able to say whether you prefer this at least as much as the other one or not. That will never happen. That is why it is called completeness. You will always have some uh, preference ordering among any pair of alternatives in this uh, space A. The second property is that of reflexivity which says that uh, if you look at A, that is at least as, as good as A. So you prefer A at least as much as A itself. So the third property is about transitivity. This is very natural in the context of preference orders which says that if you prefer A at least as much as B and B also at least as much as C, then it's very natural to assume that you prefer A at least as much as C. So this uh, conclusion should hold. And this uh, three properties we are going to assume always. Although we will make certain small changes whenever we, we go to uh, some more uh, restricted preferences as we will uh, discuss later. So set of all preference ordering. So if you look at all possible orders, uh, strict or weak, we will uh, discuss that later. Let us put all those things in, in the set R, script R. Uh, on top of that we are also going to define some ordering uh, to be linear if for every A and B now you are looking at the same uh, pair of alternatives uh, and you, if you have A at least as preferred as B and B also is at, at least as preferred uh, as A so this is this both condition that both these two things happen together then it must be the case that uh, A should be equal to B. 
So that means that you cannot really have any indifferences. So when can you have A at least as good as B or and B at least as good as A is that uh, when you have preferences like let's say C is your top preference and A and B are at the same level. You, you cannot distinguish between these two things in terms of your preferences and D is possibly below. So you can say that uh, for these two alternatives A is at least as preferred as B and also B is at least as preferred as A. Right. So if you if you consider this to be equal to R I. But now in the case of linear ordering we are actually ruling out that possibility. So it is saying that if both these two things happen then A and B must be equal. So there cannot be two different alternatives which are sitting at the same place. Let's say A and C they cannot sit at the same place. The preferences in this case can be e, C, A, B, D or something like that where you can have a uh, you can clearly say A is strictly preferred over B or B is strictly preferred over A but not both. And similar to the uh, weak preferences, all linear orderings or the strict preferences are also uh, are denoted by this uh, notation script of B. So because we now know that what is a strict preference and uh, uh, weak preference, uh, we can look at any arbitrary ordering which could be a weak ordering and decompose it into two parts. So the first part is the asymmetric part which we are going to den denote as PI and there is a symmetric part which is II. So let us look at an example to understand this better. So as we have said that RI is nothing but A and then B and C are at the same um, position so they are sort of equivalent alternatives for this player i and d stands below so if you look at and um, if you write this down in the uh, in the form that we have defined so it is just a, a binary relation then we can actually write it down in the form of uh, this pairs so we can say that uh, a and then b and c at the same place and d at at the bottom can be written as the collection of all these things where A is strictly above B, A is strictly above C. Uh, similarly, B is strictly above D and C is strictly above D. But for B and C, we can have both these two things. So B is at least as good as C and also C is at least as good as B. This is happening because they are actually indifferent in the preference order. So now that we have this set, uh, this subset of uh, A cross A, so uh, clearly you can see that this is a subset of A cross A. So we can write this preference order uh, into, into two parts. So one part is the strict preference order, or the linear order, where you have these preferences A, B, D and A, C, D, which can be written in the, uh, the, the notation of uh, binary relation in the following way. Uh, you have all these uh, things that are shown in red that are the uh, the strict preferences you can collect them together and the indifferences that you have that can be written in this form and that can be separately uh, looked at so pi union ui is actually giving you this ri so that you can say so i mean you can always decompose and this pi and ui are distinct and they are disjoint essentially all right, so that is that is essentially our setup of all the preferences, strict preferences, weak preferences, asymmetric part and the symmetric part. Now we are in the position to define what is a Arrovian social welfare function. We have discussed about the social choice function in the uh, previous modules. Now we are talking about Arrovian social welfare function. How is it different from the social choice function? Now let us look at each of these agents. So each of these players are picking their reference orders from this set R. So this is, you can say that player 1 is choosing from this script R, player 2 is choosing from script R and so on. So everybody is choosing all possible uh, weak preference orders from, uh, from this set of uh, let's say M alternatives. And finally, what you are getting as an output of this function, Adovial's social welfare function, capital F, is also an ordering. So you can think of this, uh, so how can you um, kind of make an intuition uh, about what this social welfare function is? Imagine that you have um, uh, different uh, cuisines, different cuisines available as a menu 
in in the mess in your hostel mess and finally you want to have a complete ordering over all the cuisines uh, which is collecting together all the preferences of all the uh, residents of that hostel uh, so uh, what is the reason what could be a reason because if uh, some of these cuisines are not available then you can go to the next available cu cuisine which could be uh, which is most preferred by all the uh, by all the agents together all the uh, residents of that hostel together so that could be one um, a way of thinking about social welfare function um, you have uh, individual preferences all this uh, so you can you can think of this r1 r2 and so on this uh, if there are in in borders in that uh, hostel or mess and uh, there are uh, uh, weak preferences over all of them so the preferences are given by capital r of i for that player and collectively we are trying to come up the total ranking over all these cuisines for the entire society the entire society being that uh, uh, the hostel borders so in this case we are going to define so if, because f of r so by r we are denoting so r is nothing but r1 r2 and so on r n this is what it means uh, it, this is collectively going to be an ordering and very naturally as we have defined the asymmetric and the symmetric part let us denote with f uh, f hat as the asymmetric part of uh, f of r and f bar of r to be the symmetric part of f of r now let us define two very important definitions one is of weak pareto and the strong pareto so what let us go over this uh, definition slowly so a social Arovian social welfare function f satisfies weak Pareto if for every pair of alternatives uh, a comma b in this uh, set a. So this notation, this uh, uh, notation of the square brackets and this implied part of this definition says that whenever this condition holds, whatever we have written here, whenever this condition holds, this implies that this condition also holds. So what what are we saying here? It is saying that if A is strictly preferred than B for all the players in this society, then A should also be strictly preferred than B in the aggregated society. So this F of R is nothing but the, the aggregation and F hat means that it is strictly preferred. So you can say that let's say we have a society where you have A uh, above B. Uh, so maybe there are other alternatives in between above or below i don't really i don't really know maybe there are a and b just uh, next to each other and there are other alternatives so but the point is everybody is preferring a over b so that is the that is the thing that is happening here so if you give me any such preference order where a is strictly preferred over b for all the agents then the if you apply f on top of that then it must be the case that in the aggregated one, A should also be above B. So this is what this uh, weak Pareto definition means. And I should also uh, tell you that there could be some R's where this condition does not hold. So if the condition, uh, so if there exists some R where this if condition is not holding, so you can think of that. If this happens, then immediately you can conclude this. So if the if condition itself is uh, void, so there is no such case where A is uh, strictly preferred over B for by all the agents, then we can also assume that this uh, uh, this implication is vacuously true. So you can you can have A is strictly preferred. So we cannot rule out uh, those kind of Fs as not being weak Pareto. We will say that it is weak Pareto just because that maybe not all the players were having A above B. So in that case, uh, still it, it could be weak parent. We'll we'll see more examples to understand this point when when we come to that. Now, what is strong Pareto saying? Strong Pareto's if condition is a little weaker. So you can see here that uh, if this happens, then immediately we can uh, say that A is strictly preferred over B. And you see that the right hand side of both this weak and uh, strict Pareto are the same. The implication is the same. While for the strong Pareto, what we are saying is the Arovian social welfare function f satisfies strong Pareto if for all these uh, uh, 
uh, alternatives, all these pairs of alternatives A and B, A is at least as good as B for all the players and there exists some J, some player J for which A is strictly preferred than B. So instead of this being the case, so earlier we were having A strictly above B for all the players, we are now allowing for um, indifferences. So let's say A and B are sitting at the same position, maybe for most of the players. So they are indifferent. But there exists some player, some jth player for which A is strictly above B. Now this, uh, what is strong Pareto saying is that if this kind of a uh, uh, preference uh, profile uh, you are given uh, uh, to this function f, social welfare function f, then it, it must be the case that a is strictly preferred over b. If that happens, then we will call this f to be uh, satisfying strong Pareto condition. Now you can answer this question, think about it, that which property essentially implies the other. So strong Pareto implies weak Pareto or weak Pareto implies strong Pareto. So it might be a little confusing in the in the beginning, but uh, you can you can actually write down and try to think through it, and you will see that actually strong Pareto will imply weak Pareto. And the name itself is saying some hint, but you can you can do it more formally. the The intuition is that whenever you have more stricter conditions in the if condition, uh, remember that uh, if you have this kind of a uh, uh, this kind of a situation. Uh, and you can still say that f is going to uh, uh, going to give out the uh, the outcome which uh, where a is strictly preferred over b then if you uh, fit this kind of an uh, preference profile here of course f is going to output a to be strictly above b but the uh, the other thing the reverse direction is not true because the for weak parity you need the strict preference for all the agents then if you fit this in this uh, particular weak Pareto definition is saying nothing about it. You cannot really guarantee A is strictly above B. So that is the reason when you have this if conditions in such kind of definitions which are weaker than the other one, then uh, you have a, actually the property that you are going to satisfy is essentially stronger because the right hand side, the implication is the same for both these cases. All right, so we are going to uh, define this, this term. So we say that two preference uh, uh, orderings so ri and ri prime agree on a comma b so these two alternatives a comma b if for agent i if for that agent uh, if a is strictly preferred over b that implies and is implied by that a is also strictly preferred over b in the other preference ordering so if b is strictly above a in pi then it also means and is implied by that b is also above pi uh, above a in pi prime and if they are indifferent they implies and is implied by by the same thing in a uh, in the first preference uh, ordering and in the second preference ordering. so to denote this agreement we uh, sometimes will use this notation this shorthand that ri uh, restricted to a comma b is exactly same as ri prime restricted to a comma b and when all the for all the players this uh, um, uh, uh, this agreement holds then we are just going to write a restricted to a comma b and r, r prime is restricted to uh, a comma b so this is this is true for so when this condition holds for all r okay so that is uh, agreement uh, we will sometimes use this uh, shorthand notation uh, to uh, reduce our writing so this uh, arrovian social choice function satisfies uh, a, a very important property called independence of irrelevant al alternatives. So this IIA stands for independence of irrelevant alternatives. We'll mention what is what is irrelevant in this case. So what it is saying is that if you pick any pair of alternatives a comma b in this set a, then if you agree, if all the players agree on a comma b their their relative orders they can be so there can be situations where a is strictly preferred over b uh, or b is strictly preferred over a uh, for those uh, corresponding players so what it means is that uh, it might be the case uh, so in th in this case what can happen is there could be some player for which a is strictly above b there could be some players which has b strictly above a and there are some players which has a 
A and B at the same position. So, but the point is that whenever you are going from A uh, from this R to R prime, this relative position between A and B are remaining same for those players. Other the position of other players may change. So, for instance, there might not be any other alternative uh, between A and B in this uh, for the first player. In the second preference profile, so this could be R. In the second preference profile, there could be uh, another uh, R prime. In the R prime, there could be a C somewhere sitting in in between for this first player. But that does not matter. Those are the uh, uh, alternatives which are irrelevant alternatives. We are just looking at A comma B, and they agree uh, for all the players. So if they agree between A and B, then what this uh, independence of irrelevant alternative is saying that if you apply F on R as well as R prime, the relative position between A and B in the in the final ordering should also uh, remain unchanged. So if uh, in this preference ordering, so when C was not there in, in between, the, if A was above B in this uh, in the final outcome, so when you have applied F on that, and another uh, preference, another uh, uh, preference ordering where C was there in between, uh, in that uh, uh, case also A should be strictly above B. If A was uh, B was above A, then that uh, uh, ordering should have maintained, uh, and so on. So essentially, the relative ordering between A and B should not change just because some irrelevant alternatives have actually changed their position. So that is what it means. So let us look at an example, a more concrete example to make, make this uh, uh, more understandable. So we have R and R prime. And what I have uh, carefully picked is that for player one, so these are the preference orders. Let's, uh, for, for this example, assume they are strict uh, preference orders, though they are not needed to be a strict preference order. So you can see that for player one, a is above B. Let us focus our attention only between A and B. So A is above B, A is above B for player 2 as well, B is above A for player 3 and B is also above A for player 4. Now you look at R prime, the same ordering is maintained. So the position of the other irrelevant alternatives have actually changed. So D has gone on top, C at the bottom, but the relative position between A and B for player 1, player 2 uh, and so here B is above A and here also B is above A. For all these four players have remained unchanged from R to R prime. So these are my candidates. So what it is saying is that if you apply F on, on this uh, preference ordering and suppose you have given an outcome where A is uh, let's say above B. Uh, there could be some other alternatives elsewhere but A is above B then it must be the case if you apply F on this preference uh, profile, then A should also be above B. I don't really care about the uh, um, uh, positions of the other alternatives, but A should be above B. They should be consistent in these two cases. Okay, so let us look at some of the very widely used uh, mechanism, very natural mechanisms uh, by which we can aggregate and come up with a complete ordering over all these agents. Uh, from this uh, from this individual preferences so let's say we assign some scores so let's say score of 1 to the first position score of 2 for the second position score of 3 for the third position and score of 4 for the fourth position the restriction is that every si should this should be at least as much as the second next one and this should be at least as much as the next one and this should uh, so there should be a uh, monotone non-decreasing uh, relation between all these uh, scores. So these scores are ju just uh, real numbers. Now if you pick a specific alternative, let's say A, uh, for all the players you just add the corresponding scores. So this is, this, is the, uh, this is the reason why this is called the scoring rules. And whatever finally you have the score, so let's say here if we if we uh, put a S1, so, so, so candidate A is getting two S1s and uh, one S3 and one S4. So S3 plus S4. This will be the score for A. Similarly, you can find out what is the score for B and what, what are the scores for C and D. 
So um, one very special uh, scoring rule is what is known as plurality, where you give only a score of one for the topmost position for all these players uh, and zero for all the other places. So in that case, A will get a score of two here. C will get uh, C will get a score of uh, one and D will also get a score of one and B will get a score of zero. Similarly, in this case, you will get a uh, so B will get a score of two. C and D will get a score of one each and in particular A will get a score of zero. Now, uh, uh, do you see uh, any violation or uh, is it satisfying the condition of independence of irrelevant alternatives? Because now what is going to happen is because these uh, scores are so and so, so the, the final outcome uh, in this uh, uh, under this uh, scoring rule, so this scoring rule is nothing but the F in this case. So A will be on top because it has score of two, and you order them accordingly. C and D will be the uh, the the next position. They are indistinguishable because they have the same score. B has a score of zero that uh, lives in the last position. Now here, what is happening? B is on top. C and D remains in the second position, and A is here. So you can see that even though the relative position, the relative ranking of all these. Uh, players between A and B were remaining the same, the outcome has this property that here A is above B while here B is above A. So this clearly violates the condition of uh, independence of irrelevant alternatives. So this uh, scoring rules essentially does not satisfy the condition of IIA. So now you can begin to see even though these rules are very, uh, uh, very natural and very uh, easy to think about. They do not satisfy this very important, very natural condition that if you, if the society did not change its uh, opinion between A and B, why should the outcome change the opinion? And that is very difficult to satisfy, in particular, uh, based on this IIA and the weak Pareto uh, condition that we have de de defined earlier. Uh, Arrow gave it uh, a landmark result, which says that if you have at least three alternatives, so it will not hold for two alternatives. Uh, if you have at least three or more alternatives, uh, then if an Adolfian social welfare function F satisfies weak Pareto and IIA, then it must be dictatorial. So what does dictatorial mean? So dictatorial means you just pick out one specific agent, let's say this, and always output its preference order as the output. Then naturally it is going to satisfy IIA because uh, if A was above B, so what is common in these two cases, the, uh, the same agents have the same relative ordering uh, between those two alternatives. Of course, if they are the same uh, and if you are using dictatorial, you are just replicating that as an output, the, the same ordering, relative ordering will satisfy. So you can look at this example, you can create more examples and see this is happening. So in this case, the, in the dictatorial outcome, if this was the dictator, uh, A would have been above B, and here also A would have been above B because you are you are going to just replicate this as a, as the outcome. So dictatorship or uh, the dictatorial uh, Arrowian social welfare function certainly satisfies IIA, and also weak Pareto. You can check that, uh, but. And this uh, result, Arrow's result is essentially saying much stronger thing that if you want to satisfy these two properties, Arrow, uh, IIA and weak Pareto, then it must be dictatorial. There is no other mechanism which can satisfy both these two things together. So that rules out the scoring rule based mechanisms and it rules out several other reasonable mechanisms. So sometimes this is this mechanism, this uh, result is also known as the Arrow's impossibility result because we don't really need. Uh, want dictatorial outcomes. So uh, if you want to have a non-dictatorial outcome, uh, a non-dictatorial social uh, Arrowian social welfare function uh, along with the uh, weak Pareto and IIA, then it is impossible. That is what it means.